welcome back. So, um, HVAC, stuff you got to know before you go flipping a home. You know, we just talked about the roof, and, uh, you know, the roof will give even uh, the uninitiated some idea of when it's done. Mm -hmm. Maybe the shingles are curled, maybe there's an obvious hole, maybe there's a leak inside the house somewhere. HVAC is a little tougher, and uh, the thing is, with an old HVAC system, you can die. Yeah. Uh, what's, what HVAC stories have you got for me? Well, I got brand new homes with rusty heat exchangers. Uh huh. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah, that that put a damper in their style. Uh, damper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So why do you think we had rust in there? You know, that's a good question, why there was rust in there. You know, I never really did figure out the answer to why there was rust in there. I just knew there was rust in there and it needed to be replaced. Okay. And that's the role of an inspector. You know, you don't have to know everything about everything. Right. Um, but you do need to know when it's time to call in an HVAC guy or a plumber or an electrician right. or somebody else. And, you know, uh, home inspectors really, they say, are supposed to know everything about everything. Um, but to diagnose a, something is a whole different story. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, I know that that in the early going for me, back in the mid-90s, uh, I was asked to identify why a particular light wasn't working. So I got in there with my screwdriver and I started messing around with, uh, with electrical. And um, I spent... 45 minutes at that light and the answer should be this light doesn't work talk to an electrician yeah and um, but you know back on uh, and the same sort of thing doesn't uh, applies with the HVAC the inspector isn't there to uh, diagnose or to repair mm -hmm. but uh, he does need to tell you when things are going south um, I have seen where you get um, uh, this is this is an older experience I had. I, I basically saw this uh, this uh, furnace that was an inch thick with I'll call it fur. It was just oh, dust fun. and stuff. Yeah. And I think it had probably gone years without having any sort of a filter in there. And so I recommended that it be uh, looked at by an HVAC guy. And the buyer said, "Okay, well I'll I'll do that after I." close on the house. He comes out, he cleans up the fur, and he finds that the, not surprisingly, that the burn chamber had cracked, and now she's got to replace a furnace, and now she's calling me wanting me to help her pay for it. And uh, that was a conversation, but uh, <laughs> Not a you fun know, conversation. I guess the, the point of this one is whether we're talking furnace or anything else, if the inspector tells you that you should do something, you need to do that as part of the due diligence deadline. Yes, that would be the best option, yeah. especially when they know what they're talking about and say this is kind of a big thing that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Um, HVAC stuff. So let's talk about, uh, maybe you can, um, I'll play the, uh, the dumb bald for a while. Not not blonde, but bald. Uh, yeah, I was... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, both are BLD. I've got BLD on my driver's license. So, you know, it's up to anybody to decide what <laughs> BLD means. Um, why is... Uh, why is it, What's a crack in the burn chamber and why is that important? Uh, or how can my furnace kill me? Well, you're, you're talking about the heat exchanger, right? Okay. okay. Um, so, the crack in the heat exchangers is where the flames first come, come into and the exhaust then makes a way to the exhaust stack mm -hmm. and up out, out of the roof. Now, if there's a crack in here, we can imagine the flames coming into the, these exchangers and the carbon monoxide gases and whatever gases we have in this heat exchanger going through this crack and make it into where the ducts blow the air across the heat exchangers and put it in the home. Okay. And a lot of times, actually, Garth, you can have a crack in the heat exchangers and not read CO, CO mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. in the home because the pressure of the air blowing by it pushes it back in the heat exchangers. And so not every time when you do a carbon monoxide reading at the ducts mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you don't have a crack in the heat exchanger. But a crack in the heat exchanger does mean that it's time to replace the furnace. It does, definitely. Um, now, you can, most of the time you can tell that there's a crack in the heat exchanger by looking at the flames. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say you're looking at the flames when the furnace first starts up and they're blue with a little bit of yellow, which is normal, burning a little bit of dust. And then the fan kicks on and starts up and then you start seeing the flames jump, jump around a little bit. That is a dead giveaway that there's a crack in your heat exchanger. Yeah, you should have a blue, non-dancing set of flames and not a lot of other colors going on. Right. Okay. Um, this is probably a point where I, sh where I feel like I need to, to mention that uh, you want to be careful about who you hire as the HVAC guy. Uh, some companies, and uh, they're easy to guess which ones, uh, they'll send out salesmen. Yeah. And uh, I, I ran into one in a rental that I had. Uh, the guy, there was actually, um, there's a lower panel cutoff switch. And the, the idea is that if the lower panel's not there, we don't want the furnace to work. So there's a little sensor there that says, okay, I need to be depressed uh, to know that the lower panel is on so that I'll let the furnace work. Yeah. And that wasn't uh, de being depressed adequately so it wouldn't let the furnace work. Um, my renter called out a company who said, who basically told me, well, your exterior grommet reticulizer reading is 5.64. And he says, do you want me to replace it? It'll be $800. And I'm like, A, what are you talking about? B, is that reading uh, good, bad, or sideways? And C, have you checked the lower panel cutoff sensor? And he hadn't. <laughs> uh, I was, I was lucky he wasn't trying to get me to replace the whole furnace. Jeez. Uh, you, you know, you get these people saying, for $30, we'll come out and service your furnace. Mm -hmm. If you're paying less than what it costs to service the furnace, mm -hmm. they're going to try to get you to buy something else because it costs them a ton of money just to get that truck to your house. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why they're giving you that deal. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I mentioned in uh, so many other segments, uh, you want to find people who you trust. Yeah, you definitely do. To, uh, to work for you. For me, that's Google reviews. That's a good way of doing it. Um, you can also go to our trusted contractor list mm -hmm. and look up those and actually... Before you even say, yeah, I want to go with your list, do some research on them. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, our list, uh, you know, you and I are both very particular about who we allow to carry our flag. Definitely. And if somebody is going to suck, then they don't carry our flag anymore. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I, I like the simplicity of that. Um, you know, I, even if somebody were to pay me a million dollars to allow, you know, and, and I knew they were going to suck, I'd be like, well, is, is my whole brand worth a million dollars? No, it's not. So don't want to mess with the brand. Right. Um, a good idea. All right. Anything else we need to cover in this section? Um, well, let's not just focus on the heater. Let's go out to the AC unit now. Let's do it. Okay, in the AC unit, you don't, first of all, to winterize your air conditioner, mm -hmm. don't put a cover on it, okay? That's the, not the, only superfluous, but it's uncalled for and you're going to rust out your machine. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't do any good and it does harm. Right. Okay. Okay, next, um, let's go to the disconnect panel. You should have a disconnect panel located close to... The AC, the AC unit. unit okay? uh -huh. This is where you can open up this panel and pull out the disconnect, turn it around where it says off, and put it back in, and that is winterizing your unit. So you don't accidentally turn on your air conditioner in the middle of winter and damage your compressor that's outside, okay, or anything else. Right. Um, so that's how you winterize your air conditioner. 
Now to make sure it's going to run right and properly, um, there's a small tiny hot line, high pressure line, and a large low pressure cold line. This low pressure cold line comes from the furnace out to your compressor, your AC unit outside, and it keeps your compressor cold. Okay, it's a self-cooling unit. Go ahead. Yeah, so you've got the high pressure line, which is the small one that goes into the house. Right. And then the bigger one is the larger one. It comes back out of the house to be recompressed and then sent back into the house. Right. Okay. And so this is supposed to be keeping your compressor cold. It's self-cooling, okay? Mm-hmm. And so if that line is exposed to sunlight, mm -hmm. okay, and it heats up past the temperature it's supposed to, okay, um, then you're going to fry your machine. So that's why they have the insulation on that line to keep it from overheating. And that's the black material that you'll uh, that you can buy at Home Depot for a few bucks. They even have white. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a good time to mention that uh, the fins on the, the fins unit also good. need maintenance. They definitely do. The an HVAC a, a furnace needs to be maintained every year or two, and the same thing with the uh, well, actually more so with the AC unit because it's outdoors, mm -hmm. and especially if you've got like cottonwood trees in the vicinity. Oh yeah, or a lot of dust, construction dust. Dogs outside. Yeah, yeah. I had a dog that was uh, furball, and yeah, you know, we we had his fur on those units too. So basically, you've got the air coming in the side and going out the top, and if the air can't come in the side... It can't go out the top. <laughs> and then, uh, at minimum, you're going to be paying more for your cooling. Yeah. And at max, you're going to destroy the unit. Right. Yep. It has two ways to cool itself, and that's one of them that shouldn't be compromised. I had a, a guy, that, an HVAC guy, that I talked to about that, and he says that every time he goes out to barbecue in the summer... Yeah. He uses that as, as his cue to go spray off the fins with the hose. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just can't do it once and expect it to stay clean. I've seen And then I've also seen where uh, people will have bushes right up against the, oh, the yes. unit as well. Mm -hmm. And if, if the unit can't breathe, or maybe they'll have a uh, deck that's uh, <laughs> a few inches above. <laughs> right. <laughs> if the unit can't move air, then that's a problem. The whole point about the HVAC unit is about moving air. Mm -hmm. And if your furnace can't move air, if your AC can't move air, then you're sunk mm. in more than one way. You're going to pay for it. Yeah. Yes, you are. I'm trying to think of some sort of a pun, a, a dad joke, and it's not coming. So that's probably <laughs> good. Yeah. You're full of hot air. Moving air and, <laughs> and sunk, you know, air and water. Yeah, I, I no. I'll give it up. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back.